Good morning, Mark. Mark Heppers, and uh, Mark uh, is going to be talking on uh, uh, perspectives on preparedness today. Oh no, excuse me, on uh, disaster recovery planning and testing, and its relation to business continuity planning. Mark, take off before I screw up the title again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I keep changing. Yep. Um, so today on uh, practical and for sec, I thought I'd uh, talk about um, disaster recovery planning. Um, and quickly, uh, just to sort of talk, focus my talk, I'm really talking about IT disaster recovery, and I'm going to focus on the IT portion of disaster recovery. And uh, so basically what I'm saying is it, it, it refers to the ability to restore and maintain IT services during a crisis that's been defined as a disaster. Um, and what defines it a disaster in, in all of our organizations that I've been involved with, it's key to get your enterprise risk and your legal team to help you develop what a disaster, how a disaster is defined and who gets to declare a disaster. Because when it comes to things like um, insurance, uh, vendors uh, getting you new supplies or going to a hot site or a cold site, all of those things have a legal, contractual dimension to them. So typically, you need to understand before, you know, the, the water has come up halfway up to the mid ranges that you know you need to understand how you declare a disaster and how you execute. Um, disaster recovery is a logical extension of, of fall recovery. We deal with fall recoveries every day. You know, whether it's the server smoking itself or getting knocked over. Um, disc corruption, etc. This is just a larger, more quantified event that will cause multiple outages. Um, so, whatever you're doing in your backup and recovery space, that's going to that's going to impinge heavily on what you do in disaster recovery. Um, in my definition here, I would you hear the terms disaster recovery, business continuity used almost interchangeably. Um, the way that I like to look at it is disaster recovery and disaster recovery planning is, you know, the ability to get a resource or resource set or services to survive recover from a disaster or a crisis event. Uh, business continuity is more gauged at, you know, the enterprise risk level where you're looking at how does an enterprise respond to threats, crises, you know, essentially an existential threat. Um, we're, you're probably seeing a lot of that. You know, we're seeing a lot of things in the news right now about what's going on in Japan with the uh, earthquakes and tsunamis and subsequent um, downstream outages caused by some of the nuclear uh, reactor issues. Um, so the ability to plan and respond to those things uh, actually is... Uh, uh, probably in the forefront of all our minds right now. Um, as we well wish uh, the Japanese the best of luck and everything they can do to, to recover from this horrible tragedy. Um, so focusing back on on what you need to do with disaster scenario planning. Again, uh, you know, it, it's been all across the news all the time. It's, it seems like we're all becoming nuclear engineers uh, looking at the news cycles um although there's a you know m much like the the cores itself there's a lot of heat and not a lot of light um so when you're looking at disaster planning don't get caught up in all possible scenarios um focus on the impact results of the disaster um look at what are the outcomes of any particular you know a set of disasters will have a similar set of outcomes uh, loss of data, uh, loss of information, loss of access to your facilities, loss of access to your information. You know, the information might still be there, but you may not be able to get to it because of cut communication lines or a facility that is now inaccessible because of flooding or some other uh, issue. Um, if you're involved in a regional disaster like a hurricane storm, uh, blizzards, um, you might experience uh, unavailability of your personnel. Your personnel can't get to where you need them to get to. Or in some cases, if it's really bad, you may lose people and that, of course, is a disaster in itself. Um, as well as, you know, you've got the human aspect of human loss and you're also dealing with trying to keep your infrastructure going um, while dealing with that. Um, so, define your disaster recovery. 
uh, understand you know what your loss scenarios might be you know loss of facilities loss of utilities uh, understand you might lose communications or electricity you know your facility might be fine but all of a sudden you know if the grid's experiencing a problem uh, how, how are you going to cope with that and not just in the short term but in the long term as well at what point do you decide okay well if the power is going to be out for two days we can get by on on generators if it's going to be out for a week we need to think about what happens then um, and again your recovery costs money um, so work that into your plans um, and again consider you know different types of disasters you, you might lose a building but the area might be okay if it's a regional disaster that creates some additional things to think about because all the things that you're dependent upon in that locale will not be available and not be working correctly so if you're a national or multinational organization you can probably have better strategies to cope with that if you're a local shop so to speak um you know a, a regional disaster could be an existential threat for you um and again dealing with the personnel loss you know, with a temporary permit you know and, and look at it in terms of function and quantity um also look at your third party suppliers and vendors if they're affected um you're affected um so quickly running through the stages of, of drp disaster recovery planning um, you want to plan your scope and objectives understand what types of losses you have and what your recovery objectives will be um, document the organization that's going to deal with your recovery document the key team players by organization and individual if possible and make sure you know you have a recovery team concept so identify the people ahead of time and say you know you're part of the recovery team and make sure they understand their responsibilities and what they need to do um, plan your major com components um, format and structure you're gonna have to look at your different loss scenarios to get your plan going uh, work on your escalation notification and plan activation so very similar to incident response have a plan make sure you know how you're going to communicate through that plan and what activates that plan what you're going to respond to what you're not going to respond to and what the limits and responsibilities are uh, make sure you understand what your vital records are and how your off-site storage program works both in terms of getting stuff out there we always remember to send the backup dates off-site to where we're where you know wherever they're going uh, but a lot of times people forget about how to get them back or how to redirect them to another place should uh, you all of a sudden find that you need them um, and make sure you have your personal control program you know know where your people are know how to contact them off hours um, and have an emergency plan for that understand what your data loss limitations are and understand how you're going to administer your DR plan and understand how you're going to test it um, so you know remember these things are living documents so they're going to change along with your rest of your infrastructure and rest of your life cycles make sure that you have DR in your mind whenever you're putting in a new technology or service uh, make sure you designate seconds and thirds in your command and controls you know so if you have key people in, in officer positions make sure they have a backup cross train people you don't want one guy responsible for one critical thing who you know if he gets hit by a bus or you know gets mad and gets fired um, you're stuck um, now when, if that happens during a disaster you're really stuck um, and it can really cause a halt in your ability to operate um, you know document all the responsibilities for recovery and recite recovery tasks um, you know and you need to get off to also set priorities with recovery tasks certain systems will be more important than other systems and I talk about this a lot is understanding your stakeholders your stakeholders businesses and where your key systems are if you don't understand what the key systems are to your businesses you're not going to understand what gets put back first um, and in some cases you may need to understand some of the interdependencies on those systems so if you know all of your business applications require your domain controllers or your active directory well your active directory has to get set up first and um, understanding that will go a long way during a crisis especially if you have it documented because you know at 3 a.m. when you know one wall is still on fire uh, you might get a little distracted um, so the other thing is also keep copies of your back plans at your if you have a backup site or co-location facility that you intend to use or under contract to use make sure you keep copies of the documentation there otherwise put it in some safe place that's not where you're at 
um, or where you think the disaster is going to be at. Um, so what's in this disaster recovery plan? Uh, you're going to have who's in charge. You know, what's the delegation of authority? Do you have a department list? Do you have a contact list? And, and the key players documented. What's the order of succession should some part of your personnel become unavailable for whatever reason? Do you know exactly what you're supposed to do? Who's supposed to do what? And when are you supposed to do it? Um, understand where your management team is located and contact list escalation plan. Um, do you know where your vital records are? Are they backed up? And do you know how to retrieve them? So how do you get them back out of Iron Mountain in the middle of the night should the worst happen? Um, are they all at Iron Mountain? Um, so understand kind of the life cycle, your, your information. And understand the system builds too. That's very important. How do you build your systems? Um, and you know, finally, part of the plan, the key part of the plan, how often do you test? How are you going to test? And who's going to certify that the test is successful? Um, you know, part of part of the main foilable that I find with backup and restore services is we do a great job of backing stuff up. We do a lousy job of testing the restores. Um, if you don't restore test frequently, you don't know the quality of your backup information. Um, so you know, if you if you have a, a twitchy bit of hardware on one server and you've been sticking tapes in it for a month, and then all of a sudden you go back and find well the tape player uh, the tape finally broke you try to pull a tape that was recorded on it and it's corrupted you're you're kind of stuffed um, so with quickly just talking about recovery services um, if you're a larger than average bear you're you're already working with you know the sun guards and the comp discos out there um, so you know do a little bit of education if you're moving into that space now Understand the differences between a you know, cold site is you know basically bare floor you know power and calm and you walk in and have to build everything. Hot site they'll actually you know it's a lot more money, but in some cases for certain critical things it's worth it uh, to go in and they have everything set up for you. Uh, one thing to point out, and um, I've seen organizations burned by this a couple of times, is exclusivity when you're dealing with a hot site vendor or even a cold site vendor. Typically, the contact contracts will either be exclusive or not exclusive. I was involved, you know, actually how I got hired at EDS, uh, the roof fell in on a ATM data center in Clifton, New Jersey, uh, in the blizzard of 93, and um, it was unfortunately just a couple of months after the first Trade Center bombing. Well, everybody in the Trade Center declared a disaster, and EDS found out that they didn't have an exclusive co contract on their hot site, so when they declared a disaster, they had no place to go. And there's four feet of snow out, and Jersey was shutting down. Uh, fortunately, they were able to find a uh, AT&T uh, empty co-location center and uh, took it over and built one. Um, another big thing now, cloud, cloud computing, cloud networking. Um, the cloud re represents both risks and opportunities for disaster recovery. I understand that. If you have services out there in the cloud today, make sure you include that in your disaster recovery plans. Some cloud things don't include an SLA, where the SLAs are a little bit different than a standard hosting model. So you need to understand what the terms are if all of a sudden that cloud is unavailable, or that piece of the cloud is unavailable to you. Um, but on the, on the glass is half full side, cloud services may offer you something you can leverage during a disaster to quickly get yourself back up and going again. Um, so. The other thing I want to cover is backup media cons uh, considerations. You know, where's your backup media kept? Is it off-site? What's the media in the data format? I is it encrypted? You know, one of the things that we security professionals like to do now is insist that all our backup data is encrypted, so that if the tape walks or it disappears, we don't get triggered into notifying everybody who was on that tape that you know their privacy information may be at risk. Um, the other big thing with backup media, you know, and actually one last thing on encryption. You know, understand how you encrypt it, understand how you get the keys back, and understand how you restore it on a completely different system. Um, if, you're, if you lose your PKI, how do you restore your PKI before you can get your data back? Um, you know, so that tied with when the last time you tested your restore is, is really critical. And along with testing the restore, understand that you need to test your full system restore from scratch. If I drop in a box from Dell, how do you get from your, you know, gold disk to tape? to full service recovery, 
and you know kind of the other data center gotchas um, that I've lived through the hard way you know when you walk into a new data center co-location facility make sure you understand how your power gets connected to your servers you know an example I had a client go in into a hot site and you know the replacement servers they order all had the NEMA 15p which is standard wall plug and the data center off the UPS all had twist locks so that was a quick trip to uh, Home Depot for a lot of uh, extension cables and plug-ins and uh, they spent a good bit of time making adapters um, understand you know how the replacement hardware works are you getting the same makes models is there a difference in firmware is it the same vendor uh, you know if you're if you're a Dell shop and you're walking into a contact track shop that might be a problem understand your software licenses and keep in mind where the nearest home improvement center and electronic supplier is because it's handy if something goes bad um, and that's pretty much you know disaster recovery in about five minutes <laughs> Mark, great, great segue. We're going to be doing more with cloud computing coming up uh, uh, on the 13th of April anyway. 